Okay. Let's see if you can hear me. Mm. And whether that is going to be clear enough. Okay. Let's see. Uh huh. Okay. There we go. I think, I think we're functioning. Let me get so I can, oops, what did I do? I'm going to try to get this so I can see your, oh no, that's not what I meant to do. See your comments. Uh, there they come up. Okay. You can hear. Thank you, Joe. Hello, Jack. Hello, Michael. Um, oh my goodness, now we need something to say. Let me show you a little bit where I am here because there's a lot of weird stuff here. Um, hopefully enough to keep us occupied for a while. Um, Yep, let's see, good evening. Ah, is right, I, I, am, I, am, I am in agreement with, ah. <laughs> uh, you see my mother's specters behind my work. It is insane, you were absolutely right, Maria. I didn't know, this is good that we can see, oh, they're little hearts, how cute. Goodness, yes. Um, so here we go. I'm going to back up. I'll show you. I've got, I've got a ton of stuff and a ton of, um, ton of, oh, hello, Kathy. I've got a ton of materials to show you, a faux no mask and uh, things essentially in their underwear. So Hey, Tom. Hey, everybody. Hey, Guido. Sprite. Um, all right. Now, let's see. I've got this, by the way, I've got this phone hooked up so I can keep it feeding off its juice and uh, in this little gorilla grip so we can both have it stationary and in motion. Thank you, Shay. Hey, Sprite. Um, let's see, and I, I will be thrilled to be asked questions so that, you know, um, I can be useful. Hi, thanks, Kathy. Um, what we're looking at, we're looking at the harpy that is, is recent and is created in one of my favorite air dry clay well really my favorite air dry clay it's it's premier by uh, Patico in Japan and it's very soft it's it's um, very light it's for an air dry clay it's quite strong and you can now it used to be hard to get you used to have to get it from the Netherlands I believe for some reason but now it can be found at Michael's or at my favorite online place, which is, um, uh, by the way, tell me if I'm shrieking in your ears or anything, um, that, oh, you, I love clayalley.com. It's, it's a great online source for the premiere clay and a lot of other clays I use like Cato poly clay and I thought I would um, well I'll do some work on this on another harpy that looks like she was fished out of the trash I will show you feather making yes I am I'm going to do that and let's get my little container of water let's get uh, the back of this harpy, well, here, I'll show you first as if I were doing it on the front so you can get a sense. This clay is so soft, 
and it adheres to itself so well. Let's add a little feather here. Um, alert me if I'm doing something really dumb. Um, I don't want to be dumb. It's one thing to be dumb on your own page, but on the shiftlets, that would be awful. Um, okay, so I can just bring this clay. Here, I'm going to put this a little closer, I think. Um, I can just work this clay right into itself as long as I moisten the dry surface first, okay? And it is so soft, it shapes, ooh, gosh, let's see, it shapes really nicely with a brush. So all these little, little, I'm probably going to do a really bad job while being watched, but you can see the basic idea, I hope, uh, is that I've shaped these feathers with a stiff little brush. It's, it's the equivalent of a pig bristle brush, except it's no pigs were harmed in the process. Just any stiff little brush. I, I like square or um, slightly rounded. And once I brush it with a stiff brush, I begin to get just enough texture to make it look directional. Uh, let's see. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And then I bring in my little favorite tool that if life goes as usual, I will misplace before the end of the evening. Uh, it's a little burnisher. I, I seem to remember that the shiflets themselves have a favorite tool and it's a burnisher of some kind. Correct me if you're wrong. So uh, let's see. Can you see clear, Giddy? I'm afraid maybe... Let's see. I'm going to see if I can take this right in there. Is that better? Okay, we can't see clear. How about this? See if this is better. Um, is that better? Okay. Now, yeah, it's hard with this white, I'm afraid. Let's see. Maybe I get the light a little bit. Yeah, burnishers are great, Michael, aren't they? Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, this is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to see if maybe that's better. I'm turning out one of these lights. Jeez. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll uh, figure it out. Um, I go back in after using a brush. I go in with my little burnisher and I don't I don't make even lines. I just pick out a few places to accentuate, if you see what I mean. And uh, then, hold on. I may take one of these little um, little guitar string um, rake tools, okay? And I go in and I, I take a little more out just to make it a little, I'll probably go sneak in and change all this later. <laughs> but you can see the process. You can see what it is supposed to look like up here. Um, let's see. Hi, Natalie. And by the way, if I, if I, I will inevitably miss questions. I will creep in tomorrow and look at the comments and tr yep, that is premier air dry clay. Uh, thank you. Um, I will creep in tomorrow and try to answer the rest of the questions that I miss. Um, so yeah, and then if I, it's, some people find this clay too soft, in which case one might try something called Ladal or creative paper clay, uh, but I love it because it's light and it dries quickly. Now, I am apt to put 
these creatures under a chicken brooding lamp. In fact, I have, let's see if we can see it. Uh, I, I surround a metal shelf with um, tin foil and I remove all the flammable things I've got sitting there right now. Uh, the working time, oh, and I, I put it under the, the brooder lamp um, for several hours and it, it speeds it up. Now, the working time, it's, I would say that if, um, if, uh, oh, thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you for, you, you'll, you guys will have to be a little tolerant. I'm a little witless, but, um, of course, I'm far away, so you can't, you can't smack me anyway, but um, what am I saying? Ah, um, yeah, working time, if, if polymer was oil clay, oil paint, say, this is a little like doing something in um, fresco, I would say. So if you keep water coming on your brush, you can have quite a long working time. You can also carve it away quite easily. Um, oh, you're using paper clay on your willow sculpt. That's cool, Maria. Um, let's see, it becomes leathery rather quickly. Yeah, I think that is true of this too, although this is a softer clay than the paper clay. Um, then let's turn this creature around, okay? And we have, I'm gonna put the phone back in the little hammock here. Um, and with this, I've, what I've done on the back, you can see that I have used a, um, a, what am I saying, a, um, an aluminum mesh to make the understructure of these feathers. And I want to allow these feather ends to remain a little flex flexible because then, you know, they will flex and not snap off. So the raw, aluminum meshes like this. Um, my favorite brand is probably from Activa, although most likely there's a place to get it cheaper and in larger quantities, but I don't know about it. So you can get it on a roll or in a little packet. Uh, I think Michaels also has it in, Michaels now has a different brand, Craft Smart, but the Craft Smart is a little stiffer. It's, oh, you use mesh? Yeah. Wings is, um, it's very good. It's very useful for all kinds of things. This is, it, it is good if you want a little stiffer. I happen to like the slightly softer stuff. You can cut it with scissors. Of course, you want to keep your scissors, um, dedicated or they're likely to get dull pretty quickly. But uh, anyway, you can see the mesh in these feathers. And I've covered the feathers in mulberry paper. And you can cover mesh, if you're covering both sides, you can use one of my favorite, where is it, material? Um, hold on, clip this thing back on there. You can use something like the um, Golden Soft Gel Gloss, which is a wonderful stuff that I will talk about some more because I use it to seal these sculptures. Um, Karen, thank you for asking whether this will be available later. Someone has first dibs, but we'll see if they go for it. Um, and I, if, if it doesn't hit the spot perfectly, then she will come out in public. Uh, okay, so 
With something like the soft gel gloss, I can put two layers of a paper, and usually I use a mulberry paper because I like the, I use either a mulberry paper or a pH neutral tissue paper or an Unreu paper, which is a mulberry paper. Um, let's see, wait, so, uh, yes, yes, the tips of these wings are, are just paper over a stainless steel, uh, let's see how do I do this, um, tips of these wings are a stainless steel pinion running down the top, and then the aluminum mesh, and then the mulberry paper with, um, something like that soft gel mesh. Um, the thing I use when I'm trying to, uh, let's see, do I use the golden to seal in paints? Um, I use the golden Remy, I um, hold that thought. I will get back to that just shortly. Let me just mention my, beloved gem tech glue from Beacon. This glue sticks like there's no tomorrow or like there are lots of tomorrows. Um, and if I'm wanting to adhere a paper or for that matter, the air dry glue to one side of either to wire or to one side of that mesh so that it's not adhering to itself through the mesh, then I'm likely to use Gemtac because it's a non-toxic white glue, but for some reason it adheres like a limpet to even to wire and to your hands. If you go to a store after you use Gemtac glue, you're likely to make the checkout person cringe because it looks like you have a horrible disease. Um, it could be fun. Um, yes, now the golden, I'll bring it back a minute. The golden, when I go this, right now, this creature is still in the raw clay. In other words, if I put her in a bathtub, she would turn to white mud pretty quickly. Um, the advantage of her being raw is that new clay sticks very easily when I moisten it. Um, but when she's done, glory be, and I want to seal, what I like best now, I used to use, um, I used to use gesso, you know, because that's what you do with gesso. But gesso, if you have any corrections, if you need to sand anything or go back into anything, um, the gesso tends to start peeling off in a skin um, the way that acrylic is wont to do. If, if, you're, if you use it much, you'll be acquainted with that um, frustrating quality, pardon me. But golden soft gel gloss. Other gels may do that, do it, but I, this is the one I love because if you mix it as the golden website suggests for a, a, an isolation layer in painting, which is a layer where you want to um, prevent your paint bleeding through, you mix it two parts the soft gel gloss to one part water and it makes a fabulous sealer for this stuff and I would guess for paper clay and uh, yeah um, thank you and I for paper clay and any of these porous air dry materials and also for the actual mulberry paper that I have on the wing tips um, it's also good when it, it, oh, pardon me, the virtue of it is that unlike gesso and some other things I've tried sealing this with, 
the um, soft gel gloss two to one water does not um, does not come off. You can traumatize it a lot. You can even sand it. It's not made to be sanded, but you can sand it and it, it does not peel off. It really s soaks into the pores. Hold on, let me see if I can get a, a creature who, um, okay, creature, other creature. Here's a creature. Um, this creature has been sealed with that mixture and when I sealed him or her depending on what who decides when they get him or her um, I like to kind of leave that up to people um, sometimes that oh uh, uh, Lonnie this is um, premier Air Dry Clay by Patico of Japan. It, it is uh, distributed by Activa in this country. You can get it from online, from all sorts of places. My favorite one is clayalley.com. Uh, Apocalypse Glue, you were right. I like that. I think they should rename it. Um, and Sorry, I'm, my brain, where'd it go? It's somewhere, okay. Um, yeah, oh, and you can get, you can get that Premier Clay at my, places like Michael's too. So this creature, this fawn here, what I did is I mixed the beloved golden soft gel gloss two to one with, uh, there we go. Um, with water and I put just a few drops of of liquid uh, acrylic probably this was a touch of raw sienna maybe with a tiny bit of umber in there so partly so that I can see what I just did and, and make sure I didn't leave any bald spots and partly uh, thank you Diana if not this one one close relative um, it also gives you a jump at the same time you're sealing, you have a warm or cool undercoating to play with. And it, it's also translucent, so it has a certain glow to it. And I, I like that. Um, in other words, I'm besotted with that material. Um, and the next thing I will do when I paint this I will mix, I, I will, I won't want too many coats of that gloss gel because then it could become too thick. It could begin to obscure your detail. Now I'll tell you a bit how I get that back when that happens. Um, uh, let's see, polymer clays, do you feel the details? Oh, I will hold that thought and get to that very thing in a minute because it's a very good question, Cindy. Um, next paint layer, will I will probably use a high flow um, matte medium, something like this. I love Golden. It's an inventive company. Um, no, uh, the, the air dry is not stronger, although it, it's very sturdy once it gets thicker. But I, I will go into that too. That's a, that's a good, a very good point. Um, thank you, Linda. Ah, oh, King Archimedes, that little cameo I mentioned will happen around the halfway point, I think. Um, Okay, so what I'll do is I'll build up the colors in a very translucent way. Let me see if I can go a wandering here over near to something that has color in it. Here is, um, here is, he's not lit very well, but uh, he's Lou the uh, Celtic, um, deity and 
you, yeah, you may or may not be able to see that I have built up color in layers. I begin to. Um, Cato. Cato clay. I love it, and yet there are some issues. Um, let's see. Well, I'm going to kind of abandon any pretense to organization and just dive into the various <laughs> various um, points. I actually have something where, well, I'll show you. Hold on. Let me remove this creature for a minute. Um, I'm going to raise my, this is a, let's see, I raise it up there. Okay. There we go. I like this sculpting stand. You can do all sorts of things with it. Okay, here we have borrowed from a friend, Grandmama, the original one. She has a descendant, Midnight Snack, who's eating a mouse or has caught one. Perhaps she doesn't eat it. That would be sad. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. Uh, there you go. Um, this clay, this is Cato clay. You can see that uh, it's very, well, I hope you can see. It's a little tricky at night, I realize. Um, it's very, very good for extremely fine detail. Now, I have an old lady's head here that is in air dry. This was made quite a long time ago. So you can see that you can actually, thank you, Julia. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Maria. Um, you can see that they both actually have, you can get quite a lot of detail in either material. And one of my goals in life uh, is to achieve in the air dry that doesn't have to be baked, that doesn't have to be made in so many parts, to figure out ways to achieve what I love about the polymer clays. Doesn't mean I'd abandon the polymer clays, but I just like to be able to do that. Now, someone asked a little, oops, there she's, she's, she's got a, I love square brass rods because you can put things in and they don't turn or twist, and you can take them out again. Anyway, this creature has this long, long tail. This tail is stainless steel wire coated with Gemtac glue. If I'm using Gemtac glue under polymer, I let the Gemtac glue, good, thank you, Carl Ken, I want to get, I want to do some yokai soon. Um, Gemtech glue under polymer is great, but when it's under polymer, I let it dry. I coat the, the wire and let it dry. Uh, if it's under air dry, I, I put the paper or the clay on while it's wet and use it as a real glue. If it's under the polymer, it is simply creating a coating that is congenial for the polymer, the raw polymer to stick to. Now, uh, the, the, let's see. Now, here's a case in which eventually, when life is, allows me to do so, I desire to do a piece that is partly air dry um, I know, Kazan, it, it's weird. Uh, people think that about polymer, too, and we know it's not. Um, let's see, is that... Yes, uh, I coat the wire with the Gemtac, let it dry. It, it makes the polymer adhere much, much better. Um, but anyway, I'm holding this head in front of you because... 
I want to do the portrait of a haunted mask. I want to make a ghost rising out of its mouth. Not this ghost, I actually, but a, a relative of this ghost. And I want to do the mask, um, which I'm going to call portrait of a haunted mask because I don't know enough to make a real no mask, obviously, but I can do a portrait to one. Um, giddy, let me, I will get that in just a second. But I want to do the ghost in the polymer partly because it will give it a different look and partly because of the strength. Uh, I would never do this tail in the air dry. I might do this tail in wire covered with mulberry paper using the gem tack to make it adhere well. So I might be able to do this part in air dry and then bleed it out into a, a mulberry paper mache. However, uh, I would never, never use the air dry. Thank you, Julio. Uh, I would never use the air dry for this because it would crack. It, it needs a certain thickness um, to be strong. So let me show you another weird thing. Hold on, that's pertinent to that question. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here is a an octopus. Well, too white, but let's see. Okay. Now, uh, oh, thank you, Gina. I'd like to be, I'd like to be an encyclopedia at the moment. Um, yeah, I pretty much did. I mean, I studied, hold on a second. I got, uh, on the other, oh, I'm trying to plug it in the wrong place. That's not, not right. Okay, um, I did study stage design, and uh, thank you, Maria. I love mythology. Yeah, let's see. Can you tell us? Yes, yes, I will do that. We've got plenty of time for that. Um, okay, what was I thinking? I'm thinking that this was a maquette. I, some of you may have seen the big, um, thanks Steve, thank Giddy, um, the big octopoid descending that's been out and about on on uh, the web, um, who lives with the lovely Wilshires at Ilixcon. And she was created in the Cato polyclay, which was a job, and I, I will tell you a little more about that in a second. But this was one of two maquettes I needed to work out what I was going to do because when you're dealing with that many protrusions, a uh, maquette is a good idea. And I did, the, the other maquette was the one we chose because the big octopoid was 43 inches tall. And this would have been just too I mean, it would take up too much space. We liked that vertical for this big piece. This creature, however, I, I finished the other little maquette that went to a happy home, and I like both. I like both, and I was able to reinforce these tentacles out to about this point and then fill them in with paper so that they remain flexible and then paint them. So the big octopoid to me was like, oh, a maquette is a little version of what you're gonna do. So people like Rodan would make a little, little version of something that's gonna be gigantic. So it, it's, a, it's like a sketch, a 3D sketch. Um, let's see, an armature before, Good question, Betty. I let's see. Do I have one? Um, um, the nearest thing I've got, I can show you this um, fragment creature. This is a a demon muse, I believe. Uh, and you can see. I'll tell you about the wires I like. Okay. 
this creature who will be you know one of one of the fragment types uh, I like the word fragment better than the word bust. I don't know why quite. Um, I just like it. Uh, let's see, let's get this at a good level. Okay. Um, you see here, I've used a little of the aluminum mesh to begin the chest area. Oh, it's my pleasure, Karen, to share it. I hope it's coherent and I will be happy to go back and answer questions in the comments tomorrow too. Um, these will be sort of flames coming up and I've used a brass rod coming down into here and I think, oh this, this I think is all Avis or Aves, I think the shiflets say Aves, they're probably right. Uh, fix it sculpt. Let me show you the package. <clears throat> it's one of these two part. Um, you know, yes, I start with the heads uh, usually because the heads tell me what to do. <laughs> uh, there was a period where I tried doing bodies first, but I got confused. I felt lost. Um, so, and sometimes the heads tell me to do something completely different with them than I thought I was going to do, and it results in a piece I never thought of before and wouldn't never have come up with if it hadn't been for that particular head. Um, fix it sculpt. Now, this is another Aves or Avis um, product, A V E S, there they are, uh, and it's a two part epoxy clay and the reason I like the fix-it sculpt, there's fix-it plain which is not as malleable, there's the various sculpt clays which are great but the fix-it sculpt can, the fix-it can be heated up to 500 degrees and that means that if you happen to want to use it on an armature under polymer you are sitting pretty um, and I am too slow. I, I admire all you guys who um, can do the outer sculpt in the two-part epoxies. I just, I don't do well. I need to fuss too much and too long. So I use it almost entirely either on base sculpting, the bases, or on the armatures where it's just great, okay? Uh, yeah, so, uh, oh dear, Teresa, I know I have a friend who has horrible allergies to some of the epoxies. Um, I keep this away from my birds. Uh, you know, Avis or Aves, they have a, a, a two-part epoxy. I think it's the, um, they call it a clay, but it says that I couldn't guarantee it wouldn't make your eyes swell, but it. they say that it's good for people who are sensitive to solvent-based um, epoxies. It might be worth looking at and gingerly trying out. Um, now, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Um, where? Hold on, I'm gonna I get wound up in my wires here. Um, there's a piece of what I want on the floor. Lots of things end up on the floor, I find. Um, okay. Now oh Teresa, sorry, yeah, I I yeah, that's a problem. Al allergies to the epoxies. If you weren't gonna use an epoxy on these things, what I would do is take some of the adored uh, um, golden gel medium or something like that and build a good strong paper mache is what I would be inclined to do. Um, oh good, I'm so glad new things. Uh, thank you Patrick, thank you. I was just thinking about you this morning because I have this little head and then I thought for Patrick 
this would be a huge head, but um, I will show you if I can find it. Um, okay, this I will probably, I'm not going to try to do it nice right now, but I would start building up these flames or whatever they are by putting my very malleable mesh over them. Let's see, there we go. And uh, kind of, you know, uh, it, it, the nice thing about it is it, it's stretchy because of its mesh quality. Do I use the export product? Um, um, I use the, weight is an interesting question. I, usually, if I'm understanding the question, I use the two-part epoxy partly for strength. So I like to be able to press on things and I like, I'm horribly conscious of shipping and uh, packaging for obvious reasons and I, I, I drop things. <laughs> so I do really like the, uh, yeah, I, I like the epoxy for the strength and the, you know, the ability to press on it. But I also do, you are quite right, I like it for the weight. And sometimes in the bases of things, I will actually embed some like ball bearings or some steel little, some kind of little plate you can get for, meant for other things from the uh, 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 hardware store. Because you do want, and you do, you, you want, Especially if you've got a thing with motion in it. Hold on. Motion. We have something that will show us that if I can. Un <laughs> I am so tangled around this tripod. Let me see if I can escape again. Wait a second. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. Here is. Selene riding her horse. She's the goddess of the moon. Let me move back a little. And for a being such as this, I built, yes, I build Kaizen? I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I do. I, uh, I do build everything up in layers, partly because I'm uh, cowardly and love to have layers. You know, let me see if I can get the light like it's supposed to be on this. Um, hold on. I'll move stuff around a little bit. Um, okay. Put this up. Okay, I'll tell you about the papers I've used in this too. Uh, oops. That's gross. Um, yeah, so as you can see, this piece wanted a good heavy base because I have cantilevered her out toward the front and she's very hard to knock over. Even I have not knocked her over, which is saying a lot. Um, so in this base, there is a lot of epoxy. In fact, I, uh, this is a base where I might have used epoxy on the whole uh, thing. I don't think, it, oops, I just had a light burn out, I think. I'll let it cool off and replace it. Um, yeah, uh, so <clears throat> let me break loose here. Uh, so this piece, Let's see, I'm just, oops, I'm missing. Uh, yes, I do paint these. I seal them with the two to one um, golden, as I, I mentioned, golden um, soft gel gloss mixed with water. And then I, I use acrylics and I, I love um, something, um, uh, I love uh, the Dollar Rowney FW inks. They, uh, I love I love acrylic inks, and those are particularly nice because I like to paint in layers. Um, 
and once I'm uh, <laughs> thank you Kyle um, hi Marilyn I miss you I wish you were here um, uh, okay and while I'm thinking about paint when I finally finish one you can see I probably used inks and a lot of um, of um, uh, matte fluid uh, medium in these areas that I wanted to be quite delicate. Oops, hold on. Eeks. Yeah, we're having a technical um, traffic jam right here, but uh, hold on. Yeah, um, just one second. There we go. Um, when I want to, after I have sealed it with the gel medium, and then I have, I'm done, which is a rare and astonishing moment, then what I like is a combination of two kinds of acrylic varnish. I like to mix, here's a severed head rolling around, I like to mix um, half, about half, I, I, it's not exacting. I'll tell you, Karen, just a second, I actually have a good bit to say about the paper she's holding above her head. It is paper, uh, mulberry paper. Um, I mix about half matte varnish with satin varnish because like Goldilocks, I find the satin a little too, oh, a little too, um, a little too shiny, and I find the matte usually a little too matte. Um, or I sometimes combine different levels of shine, but as a base coat, I find half matte and half satin uh, gives you a kind of nice glow. Um, oh, I struggle. Oh yes, Gabriel, I, I struggle. But that's an interesting point, actually. Um, I, I realize that it, every time I start something, including, say, a head, here's a head, a uh, head I like. I'm quite pleased with it. It's weird. It's, it's told me what it wants to be, but uh, hasn't told anyone else yet. Um, every time I start a head, I think, how did I do this before? And then I think, what if I can't do this again? Maybe I can't. Uh, and then what'll become of me, I'll have to go be a greeter at Walmart or something, and I wouldn't be good at it. So then I think, I remember, it, it's the fact that I've done it before and done it so long, and that means I know I can do it. And there's something about, yes, boy, self-doubt, it's an artist thing. I really believe that, Karen. Um, I think that there's a certain faith that goes into it, that, that I just have to decide, okay, I know this will come through, because I, I look at, at heads by people who are just starting out, and, and, and that is fabulous, and sometimes they just stop a little too soon, that they don't... Um, you know, it, it's a means to an end for me. The sculpting, it, it, the question was very interesting. Is it the technical thing or is it a means to an end? If I could wave a wand, I probably would, though I would probably begin to miss the inventive part. Um, you know, it, but really for me, it's the idea um, that that is most important. Um, Let's see. Oh, Remy, uh, let me come right back to that, whether Liquitex and Polymer 
get along well. Um, anyway, my, my point about the faces and struggle and anguish, which we probably, most of us are horribly acquainted with in some form or other, it's it's the conviction that it will come through. It's, it's like the way an embryo goes through certain stages. Sometimes when I see heads that might be the first head someone tried ever, and it, it um, thank you about the dress, Tina. Um, it, if you know you will get there, you keep pushing it. Now it's possible, of course, to go too far, drive oneself mad that way too. It's a balance. But um, I think that conviction that you will get there goes a long way. Anyway, okay, now uh, the question is, is the dress, this, the dress is sculpted in the clay, in the premier air dry clay, okay? And I wanted, uh, I wanted a contrast. Okay, she's in, in classical Greece, she, this is Selene, goddess of the moon. And for some reason, interestingly, she is often depicted riding on a horse side saddle. And with this weird kind of celestial scarf above her head. Now often it's sculpted in stone and it looks a little threatening, but I wanted something translucent. Now this has wires within it. It does not have any mesh because I didn't want the mesh pattern to show through when it's backlit. <clears throat> so what I did, I took a paper called Tengucho. T, I'm probably mispronouncing it as T E N. Uh, G-U-C-H-O, and it's a, let's see, I've got some here, wait a minute, um, it, 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 somewhere, okay, here's Tengucho paper in its nakedness, um, it's a wonderful mulberry, Japanese mulberry paper, unless I'm mixed up and it's not Japanese, but I'm pretty sure it's from, it can come from the Awagami uh, famous paper factory. And it just, you can see how fine it is. Thank you, Sprite. Um, you can see how fine it is. And let's see, I'm gonna remount the phone here. Hold on, if I can. Okay, um, there we go, okay. Um, and what I do, this, this scarf wanted to be built so that it looked like one long celestial scarf, um, but it's actually built in pieces and tacked at the uh, important points. And above her head, it's supported by stainless steel wire and it's supported by stainless steel wire back here. Some of you may remember my um, um, Morrigan, who had red, red things flying behind her, and that was the first time I'd tried to do such a thing with paper. Uh, and when I tried that first, I put too much understructure and I found it was too heavy. It weighted itself down. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Carrie. I, boy, I, I, if it weren't for spell check, I would be regressed to third grade. Um, okay, so what I did was I took this paper and I rather violently wound it up and like this. I just crinkle it. Uh, it's like throttling something. And um, I, it's like primitive pleating fabric. Oh, shipping Karen, it's its own art. Yes. So here I am, okay. 
um, there. It's been, you know, it's like tying silk to a broom like people used to do to make uh, crinkly skirts. Comes out, you know, in Japan they have amazing ways to do this in, in a much more elaborate and traditional way, but this works just fine for me. So then you get something that almost holds itself up. See, that's the paper Paverpaul. Kyle, thank you for that. I haven't actually. Um, I should try that. Thank you. Paverpaul, that's very interesting. Um, so this paper just about supports itself, and if you're running one stainless steel, one or two stainless steel wires, you can get it sculpted, really. Um, and then seal it very cautiously and probably on the back with, well, sometimes I use a matte gel medium, sort of the, oh yes, uh, I will make an open, I've talked about shipping, I've done a shipping thing on my Patreon, by the way, I should promote my Patreon and thank my Patreon client, my patrons, because I would never have got set up to to rise to the shiftlet occasion if it weren't for them. So thanks to everyone for helping me get this far. Um, what am I saying? Um, so anyway, I, I would seal this with either a matte medium or a matte uh, uh, gel on the back and very cautiously. Uh, Cindy, it is T-E-N-G-U-C-H-O. I will put that in the comments later, probably tomorrow. Um, and I can tell you one place to get it is, I've actually, well, no, this doesn't tell me. Uh, there are places online to get it. I, I have been lucky to get it um, in person until recently. Um, hold on, I gotta plug something in. There we go. Okay, yes, that's it. Tian, thank you. You know. Um, okay, um, thank you, Eduardo. Now, here's another cool paper that's been torn up by me. I tear paper up madly. This paper I have used on things like the Morrigan. It's it's like a Tengucho, but it has um, fibers in it. It's another mulberry paper. By the way, the Tengucho and this one are pH neutral. Um, I also like something called Unryu, U-N-R-Y-O, which I'm probably mispronouncing. But that is often, um, often has a a uh, stiffener, a uh, size that is not neutral. So it depends on if you're worried about that. Um, now with all of these fine, fine papers, I find that it is, it works best to paint the paper, to tint the paper before I put it onto the piece. Um, before I put it onto the piece, and I will, let's see, why don't I just tell you right now how I do that. Um, what I do, hold on, okay, let's say we have a piece of the Tengucha paper and we want to tent it. And because it's not very much heavier than a Kleenex, we have a challenge, okay? So it will be available, this, this extravaganza will be available if I hit the right button when we're finished, which I promise I will. Um, okay, I thought how on earth am I gonna tent this stuff that turns into wet Kleenex in two seconds. So what I did is I got these little lightweight dowels. I took a sheet of the size I wanted, not too huge, since I'm gonna tear it up and 
brutalize it anyway. I tape it so it's hanging from one of these and then I tape the other dowel to the bottom. Okay, so I've got a thing that's like a scroll with a stick at the top and the bottom. Then I, I, I spread out, a, well, I take a big piece of paper or something, a, a pref, something a little slick like a, uh, a drafting vellum maybe, lay it down horizontally, I brush it or I either spray it with water get it all wet, or I take one of these really, thank you Brandon for m mentioning the Patreon, I, I am immensely helped by the Patreon, you, you can get more of the contents of my addled brain for one, two, or five dollars a month, and you can come and go. Anyway, so once the Tengucho is laid out with a dowel at the top and the bottom, I moisten the whole thing either very gingerly with this soft brush. I think it's a sheep hair brush. It smells like a sheep when it's wet. It's an Asian thing. And wet it like you would watercolor paper. Then I put in a pan, for instance, I don't know, I think you can tell that this has blues and grays and very pale pinks in it. Um, while the paper is flat and laid down, I am plotting to do some resins, Ken. These are one of a kinds, but I want everyone who's crazy enough to want one of these things to have something, so I'm headed in that direction. Uh, so then I, I mix the colors I want, like in this case, the pale purpley blue, cyan kind of blue, pale, pale, pale pink. And I will, I may dip part of the brush in the one blue and part of the brush in the other. And I lay this paint very softly over the, the tissue thin paper. And more soaks in than you would think, then I just, the paper is taped, I just pick it up by its top dowel and I go hang it somewhere, perhaps over a curtain, uh, uh, shower rod beneath which you have put newspaper or something, and I let it dry and it comes out beautifully tinted. Uh, if I crinkle it first, as I found my aggravation, uh, and then I try to seal it and paint it, it's not nearly as nice an effect. So uh, here's a scrap of bread left over from Morrigan time, okay? So hey, I'm gonna take like a three minute break and uh, King Archimedes Alba, I'm gonna have a tiny little um, hi Randy Hand good to see you thank you for coming we're gonna have a little guest appearance by one of the more important people in the house so hold on just a second I'll leave this phone on it's feeding on its juice I'll be right back <clears throat> Okay. Here comes the guest appearance. It's Queequeg, the pigeon who rules the roost. She says, hello everyone. She said, if you knew me personally, you would love pigeons. Yes, she's a darling. It's a little past her bedtime, so 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make her take over the uh, demo but she says hello dear king pigeons hello arctic dove when you come and uh, there you go she is she's adorable look at those eyes she does my hair she sits on my shoulder and she <laughs> she does exactly what I remember hey Pat Queeky says hello Aunt Pat uh, hello Randy yeah there she is there's her little feet oh she says what are you doing what are you thinking I want to go back to my house I will see you <laughs> I will I will put her back I think she's wondering <laughs> she says bye King Archimedes. Yes, good night, Natalie's cat. Um, oh, birds, we love them. And yes, all critters. So, oh, now I'm gonna, I, let's see, I put on some tea water. My mother, John, was a absolute fan of, uh, of Moby Dick, so one bird, my little disabled dove is named Little Ahab to go with Queeky. And uh, if I ever get a beautiful big white king pigeon, you know what I'll have to name it. Um, so let me see, I have another thing to show you. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Okay, okay, there we go. Uh. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Teresa, yes, there are beloved darling pigeons. Palomacy, the pigeon rescue outside San Francisco will seduce you with adoptable pigeons. Um, oh yes, before, you're right. You're right, before Star Wars, we had Moby Dick. Um, um, let's see, I am gonna, thank you, Diana. Thank you, uh, everyone. Let's see, maybe you've already said, but did you tell the Grimmage of the Tengucho paper? I think I'm missing Eduardo. Um, I will be delighted to tell, but I'm not, I think the spell, auto spell took over and, and confused your question. Um, ask me again, what, what would you like to know about the Tengucho weight of? Um, yeah, it's, it's an extremely light paper. It's, it's just, oh, and there is one more thing. Well, several more things to say about this paper, actually, because, and Eduardo, let me know if I accidentally answer your question. And if not, uh, tell me again what you would like to know. Um, Okay, back comes the thing I keep holding up, the soft gel gloss or soft gel matte, but soft gel gloss, it's a great thing for sealing, it, you know, it, it uh, gloss, they suggest sealing with gloss and then going over it with a, uh, a more matte surface if you want one. But the Tengucho, if you impregnate this flimsy seeming paper, I mean, it, it's just featherweight paper. You can see I pull it apart like this. If you paint this gel gloss medium into this stuff, it is strong. It is strong and translucent and you can 
barely, I can barely tear it. So what that does is create a strong, translucent, very lightweight membrane. And what I want to try, I want to try it on some sea creatures like the octopus. Um, oh, source, Betty. I'm gonna, um, one place, good place to go look is called the Japanese Paper Place. That's its name. And it it, it's a center for a lot of wonderful Japanese papers, and they have a listing of local suppliers. Uh, but there are other places, and I, I will try to go in and put a listing of it um, in the comments tomorrow when my brain wakes up. Uh, you know, make a note of all these uh, materials I'm talking about, because I know it's hard to keep them all um, in line. Yes, yes, autocorrect is a peril. Thank you, Pat. JapanesePaperPlace.com. Yes. Um, I, I can't swear it has a Tengucho because I've been getting it locally. I'm not going to be able to much longer. But uh, it is, it is, if you Google Tengucho paper, various sources will come up and they should. Um, I mean, that this is, it should be similar. Um, oops. Now, <clears throat> another thing. Wow, it's 10 after 9. We are covering stuff, I hope. Um, hi, Bobby. Um, uh, do I mix materials depending on the sculpted part? Yes. I would say I do. I One th reason I like the air dry uh, Premier Clay is because it can blend so seamlessly with uh, these mulberry papers that I like to use. Now, the Tengucho paper is again, pardon me, what I used on these wings. And you can see if I hold this right, I think, yeah, you can see that in the stronger parts of the, the heavier parts of the wing, I used some of that um, um, aluminum mesh stuff, but I didn't want it coming all out to the edge. So this is the Tengucho crumpled, and actually it's still translucent, but it's stiff now because I used the famous golden gel medium on it. Thank you, Tian. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Apologies if I'm not. Uh, I wish I could hear you all. That would be great. Maybe someday we'll have a talk thing. Um, now these little, little feathery ends are torn from, hold on, um, these little feathery protrusions are torn from this intriguing circular paper. And I'm sorry to say I don't know the name of this paper. I have located it online. I'll try to uh, do that tomorrow again. Oh, thank you, Jan. I'm glad I pronounced it well. Um, thanks. Um, because these fibers, I tear stuff up all the time. It's cathartic. And I love a torn edge because, you see, if I cut that, it would have been inorganic. Whereas if I tear it, I get lovely little fibers sticking out. And then when I seal it with a gel or a medium, it has a feathery quality. And you can see that, I think, let's see here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you see, these little fibers are sticking off the edge, and I love that. So I I usually tear my edges instead of cut them. Yes, yes, love torn edges. Um, and this is, uh, this is, I think, the same Tengucho paper over stainless steel. Uh, and let me show you, for a while, Years ago, I, I, I found it really difficult to find um, stainless steel malleable wire, but now 
You can find it hardware stores. You can find it in, for some reason, 19 gauge. And what I like is it's malleable, but it's stiff. It's a lot stiffer than another thing I do like, which is the aluminum armature wire, which I always keep on hand. This is like 1 16th inch. And it's great for a lot of things, but it's so malleable that if you want something like uh, all these curly cues, the stainless steel is great. And I, uh, that's where I come in again with the gym tack, which I use wet when I'm using it with paper as opposed to letting it dry to use it with a polymer clay. Um, and I, I fold the, uh, the mulberry paper around it and I end up with a lovely stiff, strong uh, stuff. So this is much stronger than it looks. I like to think that my shipping policy is is look like a butterfly, ship like a football. Um, uh, Karen, I, I, some people like to put things in a cabinet. I don't because, well, I, I just used to having art in the room with me. So uh, yeah, dusting could be a thing, no doubt. But I like, I like to be able to move around a thing. You know, here you can see on the back of this uh, where I haven't sealed it in as much yet. Here's some um, uh, Fix-It Avis or Aves uh, Fix-It Sculpt, the two-part epoxy clay. Um, and here is, I remade her wings, actually. They got too heavy visually heavy. So I went in, I cut away and uh, made them more delicate. Uh, but you can see the use um, for strength of the, of the aluminum mesh near the body. Um, so she's really quite tough, even though she looks quite delicate. Uh, right now, Karen, the wings do come off. I think they're not going to at the end, but I like to be able to remove um, parts while I'm working on them because I can manipulate them, but then eventually I like to have the, usually like to have things seamless. That Selene on her horse, on the other hand, she can lift off. Um, I will show you what I use to connect things where, well, okay, um, grandmama comes back into play, okay, rather a different feeling. Grandmama has a square brass tube, okay, and it slots into a one size up square brass tube, and she balances on her little fingers plus that rod. So that's the same way that I attach wings or most anything else. It's just a matter of do I use a tiny brass tubes or larger brass tubes. Also, when I'm running a brass tube like this out of a piece or up from a base, uh, the, I have never found solid brass square things. So I ran a brass rod all the way down grandmama's arm and down in through this uh, square exterior. And then I secured it in her palm, um, probably with the fix it, Avis fix it sculpt uh, or something like that. So that there's actually a strong brass rod inside the inner square tube. And then the outer square tube is is embedded in the base, so there's no worry about strength. Um, choo -choo -choo -choo. I am gonna run get the tea water that I put on so that my brain will be saturated. I'll be right back.
swear. <sighs> back sorry about that but now I have my favorite cup with the turkey vulture portrait on it and some ginger tea um, thank you for stalking me Karen I, I appreciate oh that's a great honor if I help inspire anyone to sculpt it is powdered ginger it is one quarter or one half teaspoon powdered ginger with sugar mixed in and it's delicious um okay let's see oh i i think you know you have the talent brooding within you i don't doubt it for a second um Okay, let's see. What was I thinking I could show you? I haven't actually, I'm afraid I haven't actually sculpted much yet, but I wanted to show you, oh yeah, I wanted to show you another of my favorite wires. Okay, this is also, this is a very thin, um, oh, Janet, turkey vultures. I, I approve of sculpting turchy vultures. Hello, Arctic Dove. Thank you. When you see this tomorrow, go back to about the midpoint and you will see Pigeon Queequeg. Um, she she gave her greeting particularly to you too. Um, oh, okay, yes. Uh, I will readdress the clay in just a second. This this is also a stainless steel wire, and it's a stainless steel wire so thin that you can wrap your armature with it, which I love. Um, and it comes from some weird company called Loose, L-O-O-S Co. Dot com. Uh, I found it at the hardware store, but it's very useful. And the thing I love about um, uh, Pat, let me get back to that in just one second, paint sticking. Um, I love the, the stainless steel as opposed to merely the galvanized steel because the stainless steel really will not be rusting on you, um, okay? Uh, thank you, thank you, Brian. Uh, now, we were just, someone just asked, oh, two things. Yes, I will again show my favorite air dry clay it is very soft, and that can drive one mad a little bit sometimes. But um, it's Premier Air Dry Clay from Patico of Japan. And um, it's a, I love it because it, it, what it does for me, it feels like an air dry clay that is its own material. It doesn't thank you, pizza. Thank you, Lusco, you're right. Exactly. Um, uh, uh, yes, it feels like its own material. It doesn't feel like a would-be ceramic. I love and admire ceramic, but I'd, I'd, I'd rather either have an air dry that seems like its own thing or actually use ceramic. And to me, this is particularly... Uh, it just is its own thing, you know. Um, and you can get it online. My favorite place is clayalley.com. Karen, who runs it, is a lovely person. She sips quickly. Your prices are good. But you can also get it at Michael's and, and places like that. Um, um, let me think. Okay. The other thing about, uh, someone just asked whether I have trouble with the paint sticking. That's another thing I like about the air dries is that 
it's great for taking paint because essentially you're sealing it with, it's a porous surface and it takes water and you're, if I seal it with my half, two parts soft gel gloss to one part water mixture, you get something that inheres incredibly well that gives you a, essentially an acrylic painting surface. And once you're fully sealed, um, there is no reason you can't either use more, um, more, oh good, I'm glad King Archimedes, you're going to sculpt, that's great. Um, Ladal, I like Ladal, but Ladal clay, that is. The question is, is it similar and what do I think of it? Some people like it better than the Premier because it's stiffer. The differences I notice and the reason I, I bond to the Premier, the Ladal seems much wetter to me. It takes longer to, oh, Simon Lee is watching. Good heavens, boy, do I admire your stuff. Well, I admire so many of you guys. Um, wave, Simon Lee. Um, the, the Premier is lighter weight. It dries much more quickly, although I always build it up in layers anyway. Um, and uh, this is an important point. Um, I always attack it with a sharp implement, okay? I, do I have something that has holes in it right now? Oh, yes I do, kind of, hold on. Well, I'll just, uh, I haven't even got to the harpy that I thought I was gonna work on, but here is, well, anyway, what I do is I, I attack the thing, I sculpt it, and when it's just slightly set up, I go in like a mad person, what a coincidence. And I poke holes, hi Simon Lee. Um, I poke holes in it like a, like somebody who really hates baked potatoes and wants to punish them terribly. And I do that at the stage, it's not the final stage of the sculpt. I build up the sculpt to, you know, one layer shy of fine. Well, actually, I build it up in layers because I never can make up my mind anyway, and I like to change my mind all the time. So every layer I do, I take this wicked little, um, what do you call it, an awl, and I poke a whole lot of holes, and that greatly helps the clay dry. Now, I would do that with um, Ladal too, but Ladal is a little more like um, like a heavy, wet, cardboard-like substance, which is fine. Maybe it's a, I think it is a stone clay, and the paper clay is more, well, a paper clay. And they're both good clays. They're just wetter. I think they shrink a bit more, and they do take longer to... Um, uh, to uh, uh, to dry, and as I say, I I tend to put these things under a chicken brooder lamp, um, and sometimes I yeah, it's amazing how much talent is on the Shiflet brothers, uh, and I'm honored that you guys are visiting me today. Um, yeah, in other words, I mildly heat these things, and if it's a small thing like a head or a little critter, I will put my kitchen oven on just barely warm and let it sit in there, because overnight, this stuff is is can dry. I try not to go in layers thicker than, you know, up to half an inch, um, so I kind of use it as a, almost like a... Well, not a paper mache, but I, I treat it as if it it's material that wants to be built up in layers. And in the middle of a largish head like this, I will do what I just saw the Shiflets doing on uh, one of their videos. I uh, thank you, Karen. So far, we're we're doing okay with the tech stuff. Um, I will have a couple of uh, good, strong 
aluminum wires running down this neck and I will have a brass rod running through the stem of this thing so that it's really strong and then up at the head when I begin to build it um, I often I almost always make the head separately <clears throat> like this head that was wandering around here a little while ago um, and then I drill into the neck after it's dry and I impale it on the neck wires and then I build the neck because I, I like to play with the direction that the uh, the head <laughs> head is is looking you know and, and because that's very important to being expressive in fact some heads tell me exactly the direction they want to be looking it's weird because it's all it's just a head out in space but the the angle the head is is at will greatly impact the emotional message of the piece uh let's see patrick mason i saw uh, do you sometimes have cracking issues yes yes i do yes i do and in fact uh, the question is do you sometimes have cracking issues with the air dry clay drying on the armature due to a bit of shrinkage yes the uh, premier shrinks very little however i do sometimes especially in a in an area that well that for some reason it just is contracting over a, a, a lump of uh, fix-it epoxy clay or something or it's very thin and in that case it's generally not a a crack in fact a virtually never a crack that in any way threatens the um what do you call it the uh well the integrity the strength of the piece however i uh, what I will do is I will I sometimes carve out the pardon me carve out the cracked area moisten it rub in more of the premier clay fill it in in several layers that often fixes it but that brings me to the other point I was going to make that oftentimes nowadays I treat the premier air dry clay as a substrate and by that I mean that I will return to my soft gel medium and I will use it as it likes to be used it tells me um, as a paper mache they 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 uh, the golden website which by the way is a really good uh, art material website it, it gives you a lot of information um, they say it's great for collage so I use it for subtle paper mache and if I take a piece of this Tengucho paper which gets very strong once it's impregnated with the acrylic gel and I just paint on the gel and I put this over it it's essentially invisible but it creates a um, a layer a very thin layer with great integrity over any problem area so I actually like that because both the golden gel and this uh, pH neutral mulberry paper very archivally sound uh, materials so I plan and plot to um, to invent new uses for some of these things um, let's see using paper clay as you mentioned armature do you have much cracking from shrinkage well that's sort of what was just being talked about very little cracking however there there will be some somewhere probably so I will either probably both carve it away and then use um, some of the mulberry papers that I really love and some of the gel mediums to go over it um, and the other thing is about putting these things under a chicken brooder lamp or in the oven on very low 
I, I want to get them hotter than they will ever be in anyone's normal house. I want more um, variation. Uh, yeah, the, so it goes out and it's safe. Yeah. Um, good question, Tina. Do you ever use polymer clay and paper clay in the same sculpture? Yes, I, I was showing how I plan to make a haunted mask with the... Uh, uh, in two distinct parts, the mask with the ghost rising out of it um, and have two, two very different looks that way, getting a little chaotic up here. But, um, but I also have used it, I have sometimes made, um, in fact, tomorrow if I can remember to do so when I go over the comments, I will... Um, show you a piece where I used polymer for the head and a kind of shoulder plate the way you would do with a doll although the thing was fully sculpted and I made the hands from polymer and then I made the body um, from the Premier air dry clay and I just ran my paper like garments over the polymer and if I run paper over polymer, I return to the Gemtac glue, which sticks like nobody's business, even to non-porous materials. That's what it's meant for. It's meant for uh, getting yourself up like, uh, what's that guy who plays a piano or used to and said that too much of a good thing is wonderful. Lots of jewels, gluing jewels on your prom dress. This is what this is really for, I think. But it works beautifully for porous over non-porous. Um, let's see, I think I've forgotten a question. Yes, Jim, Golden is a really good company, um, really informative company. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm going to take a bit of tea from my... Oh, I've got two mugs going. Look, you, my bird contingent will appreciate this. It's a bird. It's the, it's the Troubled Bird series from Mincing Nightingale. It says, my crazy runs wide and it runs deep. Yes, Liberace, thank you. That's who I'm thinking of when I think of Jim Tack. Um, thank you, Betty. Mm. Okay, now I could actually show you a case where, let's see. Um, let's see here. Let me remove some of this stuff so we can do something new. Oh, and by the way, uh, choop, choop. let me get, get things out of the way here. Wait a minute. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. One other, speaking of wings, this is an ancient pair of wings that came off some angel that I was working on. And in this case, you can see uh, they're old and yellowed, but I used a, a primitive pleated silk and I cut it in strips and I put it, um, I, well, you can see what I did. I layered it onto the feathers and then I painted it with acrylic gel. It was rather time consuming. Uh, but on another piece, a piece that went to live with Richard Simmons, curiously enough. Um, it worked quite well. Anyway, so silk can be used similarly. Um, I've got another kind of silk right here. This is silk gauze. I was just gonna say that I sometimes use silk gauze or an even finer but much more expensive version of silk called crepeline, which sounds like a name for a lady from the 1950s, but crepeline is a, um, and I'm right now I'm doing what I like to do to silk gauze, not for, uh, 
frustration purposes, but to make it into an interesting textile, I'm, I am um, distressing it, you might say. Uh, you can see it gets a wavy texture and it, it looks more interesting to me that way. But uh, crepe lean you can get from a company called Talas, T-A-L-A-S. It's quite expensive, but it's, it's what I told uh, Nicole West on eBay. Some of you may know her. Um, it's, uh, it's what is great for tiny fairies, partly because you don't use so much of it and partly because um, it is just like a spider web and it, it's really meant for, um, for document and textile archival repair. Oh, Tina, thank you. I'm glad to know for the fishing suppliers, um, supply for stainless steel wire. Very interesting. Um, okay, Pat. Yes, I can show you some scribbles. Let me let me do one thing first since I've kind of cheated on the actual sculpting part so far. Let me show you the lovely soft gel walls in action with the Tengucho if I can pull it off. Um, uh, the fabric, let's see, that was my my dog barked. Oh, the fabric is um, called crepe lean. I think that's C-R-E-P-E-L-I-N-E. -E. I'll put all these weird names in the comments tomorrow. Um, and the, the site for that is talas, T-A-L-A-S dot com. And what it does, it has a lot of... Uh, um, um, document repair and archival materials. Um, okay, so let's see. Hold on. Um, I want to, this is a lovely being commissioned by someone who wanted some clover, which is lovely. It's going to be a monarch butterfly. It's monarch, monarch of the clover. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, I, I love to be supported on Patreon. It, it does me a tremendous good. And I thank you all who, who do. Um, okay, I am painting on to this wing a layer of gold and soft gel. I don't know why it's called soft, but it is. Um, me, uh, gel medium, which is good for collage. And then I'm just gonna lay this, um, lay this layer of Tengucho paper over it. And that will give me an extra nice, uh, painting surface and it will also show what I mean about how neatly um, this Tengucho paper works as a paper mache. Um, paper mache is another thing that little children use and uh, thank you Shahar. I'm, I'm glad you, Remy Tuck you were right, crepling there. Um, there you go. So what I will do now is let this dry and then I will just probably fold this over the edge, tear it off at the end because I like to tear edges and uh, it will be virtually undetectable and it will also be the kind of thing that protects from uh, any superficial cracking. Um, I. I am very interested in expanding the uses of this paper stuff. Um, she has, by the way, she has, yeah, she's getting, uh, she's got clover on her base and, and everything. Now, Pat, my dear friend Pat, just asked if I could show you 
um, an example of the scribbles, and I think I'm gonna, yeah, hold on. Um, we are quarter to ten. I can't believe it. That's amazing. Uh, hold on a second. I'm gonna bring back this this horse for a minute. Um, okay, because let me back off here. Hold on. Okay. Oh, welding supply, Teresa. That's a good idea. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to show you what I do is I scribble, and I really mean scribble. Um, hold on. Uh, traffic jam. Traffic jam. Um, do -do -do -do. Hold on, I'm seeing my dirty floor. Um, okay, here we have the first scribble, okay, this was done napkin size, it's, cons I don't think it was actually on a napkin because I like to carry a uh, uh, translucent drafting paper because it gives me a feeling that I'm not making a commitment. And I like to scribble over coffee in the coffee shop. So this was a little bitty scribble of Selene, and you can see there were some differences. You know, I had more trailing stuff down here, and I had fewer waves. But you can see the progression um, from very messy concept to this and the main change was under here this I had this dragging I had this um, coming down just a little wave and when I began to build it um, when I began to build it I realized that that part coming down looked heavy it was dragging it down and what I wanted was the lift I wanted the lift of those waves. Um, so that was the change. And so that's, that is pretty much, let me see, there's another one over there. Hold on. Um, there's an octopus clinging to the wire of my microphone. And, oh my goodness, hold on. <laughs> I'm creating um, chaos. It's one thing I do frequently. Um, okay, let's see, here we have, whoop, 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 whoa, knocking a harpy off her rocker, um, okay, here we have a very rough sketch of a deer that goes with Artemis, and I will move this around and show you that deer and how that came about. Um, okay. Okay, this deer who's about ready to be painted also changed quite a bit. You can see the little sketch was just, um, you know, it's okay. It's okay. And, and my quite wonderful client who commissioned this who is, has the patience of a saint as I fuss and fuss and fuss, um, liked the drawing, but you can see that once it's in 3D, I think it's much, much better. It, it just becomes, a, it, the 3D allows me to sketch in the armature wire, okay? Um, it, 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 becomes alive because I have the three dimensions. And when I scribble, I deliberately leave it a real scribble. I mean, if my object is a drawing, I love to draw. I mean, I don't have any finished drawing at hand, I think, but, but when the thing is gonna be three day, I, I love to, um, 
I want the drawing to be loose enough that it lets the 3D thing talk back to me, you know, because it is a conversation, you know, I, I have to be a good listener to the piece. And, um, and yes, it, for some reason I thought it had three birds and then the client suggested um, Dear Little Quail because they're, they are of Artemis and I, I love that because they're, uh, <clears throat> they're unusual with their little top knots and things. And the little quail, you know, I, I want them to look airborne so I sneaked their supports in, you know, behind them, obviously. Uh, and here we've got, I coated these in the mulberry paper and then added uh, the little bits of um, Highlander, the little bits of uh, 3D flower. These will be the, uh, the sea lavender um, in the end. <clears throat> um, let's see now. Um, okay. Have I talked about anatomy and what kinds of reference I use? Good point. I have oops, ugh, quite a number of anatomy books of all kinds, some ancient that my mama had in college. And uh, yes, birds do make everything better. Absolutely true. Um, and I, I like, I use, I use a lot of reference books um, all the time, uh, various kinds of reference books. Um, and I, it just, it pays to go in and, and uh, just examine a whole bunch of them. Oops, I'm getting very tangled up here. And if I may say, um, a great, greatest place that I've come upon. I'm, I'm sure there are other marvelous um, teachers in, in anatomy, but anatomytools.com has anatomy classes and creature classes when they do them to die for. So, um, hi Jonathan, good to see you. Uh, so, yes, now let's see, so right about conversations. As sculptors, we are storytellers, very true, Shahar. Um, but we tell the stories told by our own pieces. Yes, yes we do. And, um, oh, by the way, let's see. I, I have the urge, even though I'm not doing at all what I think I probably was supposed to do, which is just sculpt, but I hope that the materials have been useful to you, I just wanted to show you these two paintings, speaking of story and inspiration. This one here was painted by my mother when I was about four years old, and I, I rediscovered it just about a week ago. Kind woman has given it to me. And this being here, which is very sculptural, is a being my mother painted in the last years of her life. So, you know, decades, decades later, her style, and personally, I, I love both, you know, but it's an intriguing, um, it's an intriguing uh, morph, I think, you know, and we all, I think it's a testimony to both the value of the oldest one, which just to me speaks volumes, it echoes into my childhood self. It's Isaiah being cleansed with the burning coal by the seraphim. And this, we know not exactly who it is. It's sort of half red rock and half angel creature. Um, she did a whole series called um, Celestial Nudibranch. Um, yeah, oh yeah, I love anatomy tools. Um, and one thing I w wanted to say was it, it, speaking of the conversation one has with one's work or the work of others, 
I love the awe on his face. It allows the work to lead you forward. It allows the work to lead you forward. Um, Kazen, uh, Anatomy Tools does offer online, I believe. I, in fact, I'm pretty darn sure. Um, I have not done that, but I hope they do. And of course, I would love, if Simon Lee's still out there, I, want, I would love to take one of his classes as soon as I am able. Um, I don't know, maybe art skills heredity or just rubs off because you grow up with creatures like this. But one thing I, I wanted to note for my plans, I am totally besotted, partly because of my history, and isn't that a weird angel face, um, with the texture she was using in her early paintings. This was way back when. And um, Cindy, that's an excellent question. Um, I will answer that in a minute. Cato versus Premier. Um, but I would like to try to get some of these effects with the papers that I've been talking about in a sculpture. So we will see if I can do that. Um, question about Premier versus Cato clay. Okay, now here is, let me put this back in its little holder. I've been falling all over the place with it. Um, yes, Jonathan, that would be fabulous. We would love to take your classes, Simon Lee. Um, it's uh, how to do things. I would like to know how to do them your wrong way very much. Um, this is this is a creature in Cato. She's going to be a thing with uh, she's a water demon and she's going to have tentacles and suckers trailing away. She swims through the deep and um, and uh, I love the smoothness of the Cato. I am intent on finding out whether I can create a similar effect. Um, a similar effect with the air dry materials. It seems to me that the two can meet. This is a weird thing I found in a box that I made, I don't know, 15 years ago. It's sort of a, a, um, <laughs> a little Hieronymus Bosch critter. And I will tell you about that uh, conditioning. The nice thing about the Cato that you can see here is you can mix color in the clay. This has no paint on it at all. Oh, and someone was asking about paint. When I use the um, polymer, I often mix some of the color in the clay, and Cato is very good for that, um, and then use just a touch of the Genesis heat set paints. Um, and how to decide whether one's going to use air dry versus polymer. The thing I learned about Cato clay, which I meant to say earlier, um, when I did that 43 inch octopoid, yeah, Cato is a polymer clay. You might find it quite interesting. It's very strong. It's what this uh, ghosty creature with her flexible tail that does not break is made of. Um, ah, yes, I'll show you. Uh, I'm glad. Thank you, Simon. Um, here, I'll back off and show you that when I'm not falling around the floor with this, I attached my camera via one of these little gorilla. I think the company is Joby. It's a flexible armed um, um, little um, tripod. And then this, which is a, a, you know, a spring-loaded thing that grips your phone and has a swivel on it, that is from a company called Square Jellyfish. And it 
will um, screw onto any standard tripod. Um, it also comes with uh, cute little legs of its own. And yes, it comes with these little tripod legs. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, if you want to use your phone tripod on a table. Um, and all of those things are pretty darn cheap. So that's what I've been using when I'm, I'm using it. Um, and it's 10 o'clock. I was about to answer some question, but what was it? Um, Oh dear, let's see. Yes, Kato is a polymer clay. Oh, I wanted to say this about Kato clay. There are two things to know about it before choosing to use it, and then I'll, I'll end. Um, my pleasure, Simon. Um, that the Kato clay, it's great for little tiny things, okay? It is great for modest size things. But if you do something really large, there's enough shrinking. Oh yes, Julia, I'll tell you about a conditioning of it. Uh, if you, in other words, this itty bitty head, well, for, for Patrick, it is a giant head, but for me, it's a little head. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's great for that. It's great for things like tails and tentacles. Uh, here is a thing that will eventually be about a 1 6 scale Morrigan available to you all, which is, this is not Cato, this is uh, half uh, Primo and half um, Firm Grace Sculpey. Uh, thank you, Tina. Thank you so much. Uh, but the thing to know about, two things to know about Cato. It does not, resp it inhibits the setup of, of uh, platinum base mold material. It's fine with tin, but you can't use it with platinum. Maybe it has a bit of sulfur or something in it. It, it does not let the surface set up. And, uh, and the other thing is, it shrinks a little bit. And if you're making a big thing like that octopoid, uh, you almost have to sculpt in tectonic plates because it will crack otherwise. It will crack a lot more than the Super Sculpey Plus Primo. So there are advantages and disadvantages. It's beautiful colors, strong, but experiment. Um, hey guys, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. So much appreciated. Um, thank you, Melissa. I want to follow, finish this water demon too. Uh, so we actually made it slightly past 10 p.m. And I will come back and I will look at the, on the marvelous and beloved Shiflet Brothers forum. Thanks, Pat. I will come and try to answer other questions tomorrow when my brain is back in one piece. And thank you, Suzanne. If anybody wants to come and participate and be my Patreon patron, I am thrilled at every single one. And uh, I'm planning, I, I don't know, I'm going to try to do this more and it'll also up my game on Patreon where I, I so appreciate it. So. Uh, Thank you guys so much. And Queaky Pigeon says, Coo, we love you all. And um, it's, um, it's time for bed. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for the Shiflet Brothers and their fabulous forum and all the incredible work that is on it. So, oh, oh, I always read this. So does uh, Mike Murnane. Here is a favorite quote from dancer Martha Graham. And with that, I'll turn off. There is a vitality, a life force, a quickening that is translated through you into action. Sometimes it makes me snivel. And because there is only one of you in all time, 
I must be really tired because I'm really snowy. This expression is unique. And if you block it, hear that, Pat Lillick? If you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost. I think I'm moved by it this time because there's so much good work out there, you know? So much good work. And the world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is nor how it compares with other expression. And that's very important. Not your business to determine how good it is or how it compares with other expression. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly to keep the channel open. I think that's good advice. So thank you so much. I will see you soon. I will see the comments tomorrow. Going to make sure my pigeon is bedded down. Much affection to you all and much admiration for everything that appears on the forum and the forum itself. Good night. And now let's see. I